Okay, so the next one they want is a mechanism, um, and they want me to uh, use sodium bihydride um, in the presence of CECL3, only reduces ketones, starts off with compound F, CH3, C double bond O, CH2, CH2, CHO. Aldehyde group won't touch, it's told me up here. I've got my hydride here. That is going to attack my delta plus carbon, which goes there. That goes to the oxygen, which is delta minus. That gives me my intermediate, like so. And he picks up a hydrogen from water, like so, to give me my final compound, uh, plus OH minus from uh, where to pick up a hydrogen from the water. For the next one, they want me to um, predict the number of carbon NMR peaks for each of these. Okay, let's have a look. These are all different, aren't they? So one, two, three, four, five for that one. These are all different, one, two, three, four, five. For this one, these two are actually the same. So one, one, two, three, four for compound E. So five, five, four. Uh, okay, so ozone is a uh, technique to use break open a carbon-carbon double bond, and it's given me an example here. So it basically just breaks that bond there, and that becomes C double bond O, and that becomes C double bond O, like so. So, draw structures. So, uh, I'll probably do this in a slightly odd way. Um, pent 2E. So, I've got CH3. Uh, well, I tell you, let's just do all the carbons. So, it's one, two, three, four, five. Five carbons, and the double bond is going to go on that one, isn't it? And uh, that's CH3. Like so. It's going to break that bond there. So um, it's going to end up with that ends up with an oxygen, and equally that end up with an oxygen like so. So those are my two products there. Uh, right, so hexa to four dye. Um, so let's draw this guy out. Um, obviously I've got six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hexa, two, four, diene. Um, so I mean, you don't need to worry about drawing out all the hydrogen. It's going to break it there and it's going to break it there. So I'm going to end up with H double bond O. This guy in the middle is going to end up with there and there, and then I'm also going to end up with that guy there where I've broken it. Uh, those two, you can see, are actually the same. Alright, so this is a tricky one. Um, I've now only produced one product. So because I've only produced one product, it must have originally come from a ring line, because if you look at the other ones, I always produce two, um, because I broke the molecule in half. Um, so, what you need to do is, it's going to be a six-membered ring, and obviously if you wrap these two together, you'll end up with a double bond there, like so. Okay, uh, on to question three then. Uh, so, um, I now are going to react two alpha amino acids together to form dipeptides. So these are the two I'm playing around with. So, I'm going to start first of all with aniline, so it's H2N. Uh, C H C H three C double bond O, and then when I get to that O, I join that N there. C H coming up here is just C H two O H, and then I have my carbon here. So that's one. Dead easy to draw the other one. All you do is you just copy out this basic structure, but you swap those two groups over, so it's really quick and easy to do the second one. Um, so it's the same basic structure, but that one becomes CH3, and that one becomes CH2OH, like so. Uh, right, so isolation points given below, draw the structure of the isopod. 
Uh, and you notice that the one the pH they've given me is actually the pH of this isoelectroid, which means I form the uh, little line. Where the hydrogen has been transferred onto the nitrogen. There you go. For serine, you notice the pH is alkaline um, compared to that. So I could have deprotonated my carboxylic acid like so. Okay, so this is quite a tricky one. Um, proline can polymerize to form polyproline draw that structure. Because it's a ring, it freaks people out. But it's gonna be the same. That bond is gonna break and we go to the end of a next proline. And then that H would have to come off and that would go there like so. So it's dead easy. Treat it as the same way as any other thing and just take two bonds of the same. Um, just that, just that is your carbon, obviously, that they're both attached to. So it's still an alpha amino acid, like so. Okay, so it wants me now to uh, predict the NMR, proton NMR of seven. So if you check out your data sheets, you will see you've got HCO coming in at about 3.3 to 4.2, and HC attached to a double bond O coming in at around about 2 to 3. So let's do this boy first of all, which is going to be that one there. So somewhere between 2.0 and 3.0 ppm. Relative pK of 1, splitting pattern. Well, he has got two protons on a neighboring carbon, so he is actually going to be split into a triplet. And then these guys here are going to be that one there. Um, so they're going to come in between about 3.3 and 4.2, relative peak area of 2, um, and they've got one neighbouring, so they are going to be split into a doubler. Um, okay, so this is the kind of question that can freak you out in an exam, um, because you think, oh, how many chiral centres are there? So just think, okay, it's, um, you've got to look for carbons which have got two different, uh, sorry, four different groups attached. So they are that one, that one, and that one that you're looking at. Um, how, uh, suggest two benefits from using single stereoisomers in the synthesis of drugs. Um, okay, so one is that you're gonna have less side effects, um, because obviously a one optical isomer could cause um, bad side effects in a patient. Obviously increased pharmacological activity as well, um, because the drug that you're taking is all the active drug um, rather than, you know, it could be 50% of a useless drug. Um, also, it reduces the cost of having to separate all the different um, stereoisomers out, which is quite difficult to do. Okay, so uh, it's broken down by acid hydrolysis. Draw the structures of the three organic products that are going to be produced from the acid hydrolysis. So you're looking for ester groups and you're looking for amine groups. So that is an ester group there, so that's going to break. That there is an amine group, so that's going to break. So let's start off with him. So you draw him out as before, but stop there. Like so. That O is going to become OH. That O sorry, that is going to end up in an OH as well because it forms a carboxylic acid. But remember, this is in acidic conditions, so that nitrogen is going to be protonated. This one is quite easy. That just becomes the alcohol there, breaks there. This guy may freak you out because it's a ring again. Don't let them freak you out. Just remember that that nitrogen will also become protonated because you're in acidic conditions. Um, okay, so we hydrolyzed it and then we, we analyzed it using uh, gas chromatography mass spec. How does that enable the products to be identified? Um, first of all, the gas chromatography will separate the products um, and then the mass spec um, will identify them by comparing the uh, spectrum against one in a database. Okay, so um, 
gives me the old and I'm on now, I have drawn, um, I've gone for the data sheet and drawn them on just to speed up a little bit. I know the molecular formula is C10H12O um, and I've got eight separate peaks in my carbon NMR and the hydrogen NMR should go. First of all, I've got a peak of zero ppm. What is that? Uh, it's TMS and that's used as a reference point. It's a standard for chemical shift measurements. Um, the next one is I have to try and identify this molecule. Okay, so I kind of would start here. You've got a benzene ring, haven't you? Um, and you've got four, an intensity of four, which means that you've got two substitution. You've got a CHO group coming off there, which is an aldehyde group. Um, but, oh, hang on. I've got a CH2CH group coming off there as well. So let's get rid of that because that is obviously going to be CH2 CHO from that peak there. Does that work out? That's a triplet, yeah, because it's got two neighboring hydrogens. That peak there is a double because it's got one neighboring hydrogen. I've also got from here, this quartet triplet is a key um, hint to you that you've got a CH2, CH3 group coming on. So you've got CH2, CH3 coming off there as well. So those two have given me my two uh, groups coming off the benzene ring. Um, will that give me eight peaks in the NMR? Well, uh, yeah, uh, because those two are the same and those two are the same. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, obviously you probably need to play around with that and move your substance around, um, but because you've only got eight peaks, they must be um, the opposite sides of the ring to each other. Really good idea to um, just quickly go through the table and that gives you an idea of how to build the molecule up.